Hello, hello, Cancer. Welcome to your mid-2020 overview reading and your August 2020 reading. So this is going to be good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Cancer. And if you would like to take a moment, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make sure you leave me a thumbs up and a comment if this resonates. Check me out on Instagram for more content from me. And if you'd like to work with me or check out all the other good stuff I have to offer, like my newsletter, among other things like my podcast and good stuff, check out the description box. Now I'm going to lay this spread out and then we will get started. Okay, so here's how this reading is going to work. This is a timeline for the second half of 2020. So July is over here and December is over here. These break it down into quarters. So they're about six week periods of time. Now let's go ahead and start with the Oracle cards and then the August reading will come at the end. So we have destruction. Ooh, okay. So there's some tower energy coming off of this in the sense that it's about breaking things down and destroying what no longer works. So the only things that you want to carry with you into the future are things that you would like to compound. And a lot of the time we have to let go of things that no longer serve us, that no longer resonate, that are no longer in alignment with us. And so destruction, is a welcome part of the process in our evolution. So start looking at this as a necessary component of growth, a necessary component of your getting what you desire. It's not something to be feared or demonized. It's something to embrace and kind of ride the waves of as you go. And then we also have, we have the tear. This has to do with mourning, grief, and that destruction card, the breakdown energy, obviously inspires feelings, emotion of some sort. And so your task here is going to be moving through the emotional process of whatever it is you're encountering. And then we have genius. Acknowledge the kindness of your muses. Create time and space for flow. Release your pressure to perform. It's not all up to you. So the other message that I'm getting is like, let it be good enough. Let, let good enough be good enough. You know, not trying to force something to work or be perfect if it's simply not. Let things be good enough. Okay, let's get into the timeline. So the first thing you have coming up is the Hermit. This is going to last until mid-August. I'm getting that there's solitude, contemplation, quiet. This is a lot of internal work. This has to do with you just buckling down within yourself and finding your own light, creating your own medicine is the trick here. And then to clarify this, what else do we have going on? The seven of pentacles. So you're going to have to try a few, try many different things. There's going to be probably different projects or perspectives or things that you have going on in your environment. And the hermit is just reminding you to kind of ground yourself, find your light and that's where the clarity comes in. So if you have a lot of irons in the fire or if you have a lot of different options or many different things that you need to tackle, that's completely okay. It's just about reminding yourself that the clarity is going to come from quiet contemplation, right? Not not thought. I want to be clear. It is not about thinking your way into clarity because that doesn't actually work. Clarity can be found through action, and clarity can be found through stillness and silence. So it's actually about getting away from the mind, away from the mental body, into your physical body, and into your intuition. The second quarter, we have justice, and this is where things are really starting to get clear, you see. So there's some 
uncertainty with the seven of pentacles. How, how many seeds do I plant? Where do I plant the seeds? What am I actually asking for, etc., etc. The second quarter is where that finally comes through. It finally comes to light and there's, there's more of a map for yourself. And we have the two of swords. So this is about the how. Justice is about knowing the what, getting a bird's eye view on what you're doing. And the two of swords is a lot of uncertainty or not being able to see how things are going to come to fruition. You're going to have to ride this out. This is something that you're not going to have a clear cut okay, this is how things are going to transpire. You're not going to know any of that until after the fact. So if you're finding yourself getting too hung up on process, you might need to revert back to hermit mode in order to get clear. It's like you, you don't need to have the source of everything identified right away. This, you guys know I'm big on active creation. That's kind of the whole point of being on earth, right? Evolving and creating. And so the whole point of you claiming the the desire, whatever decision you make up here, is like placing an order. Like, oh, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. These are the seeds that I'm going to nurture to full health and that I'm going to nurture to grow into whatever I want them to develop. So you can have the vision, but moving forward with whatever you want does not require you to see every nook and cranny, every detail. You can be partly blind, just have the end desire in mind and, and follow along wherever you're getting guided. You can intuitively get to where you need to go, but you have to exercise faith and you can't get paralyzed in not knowing every step. If you fall into paralysis every time you're uncertain about how something is going to come to fruition, you're not going to make very much progress. So instead, hold the vision, hold the desire and know that you're going to get what you need in order to make that happen. The third quarter is the Knight of Cups. This is all about showing up with your full, your full self is the word that's coming through. Let me see what else. Seven of Swords. This is where I'm getting the destruction element comes in. Because the Seven of Swords is, on one hand, concealment, but I'm also getting for you that it, it has to do with pulling energy away from things. So perhaps you realize, oh, this isn't my zone of genius, or oh, I actually don't enjoy this and I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to bring this with me. You don't have to carry unnecessary weight or put on a mask that it really isn't working for you. Let yourself evolve. That's the main thing. You might be a little bit worried about shaking things up or doing things differently, but this is about getting closer uh, into alignment with your heart. And so part of that does mean that you're going to have to shelf stuff that doesn't work or that doesn't align with you. So be okay with that. Move forward with the emotional processing, however that is, and remind yourself that you're actually getting deeper into your essence. Nothing is actually being destroyed, it's just being recycled and it's converting into the next, the next version of you that is trying to develop. It's like when a tree falls in the forest, it doesn't go to waste. It's not that the tree has been destroyed. It gets hollowed out. It becomes a home for ground-dwelling animals, so on and so forth. So you, you have to look at everything as having a purpose and being recycled instead. Even if it doesn't work or something you decide you don't want to continue giving energy, be okay with that. Just because you spent time doing something or being a certain way does not mean you have to bring that with you in the future. And that's what this third quarter is about identifying. And then wrapping up the year, we have the Five of Swords. I like the Five of Swords because it's, it's about hardship being over 
Like, there's not actually a reason to fight so hard. And I think you, you actually realize that. So let's see what else the end of the year has to bring. Knight of Swords. So independence, freedom, liberation. This is about freeing yourself. That is the theme of the rest of the year. Freeing yourself from what you think you need to be or what you think you need to do or what type of relationships you need to have or the job that you need to have. It's about throwing away the playbook and being your full self, accessing your full self, embodying that completely and trimming the fat. The, the end of the year, I actually see a great breath of fresh air. There's all of a sudden ease and release that happens during this fourth quarter, the very end of 2020 is going to be something where it's, it's a big sigh of relief is what I'm getting. There's no need to tread water because this, this is kind of what this is looking like here. There's a lot of treading water, um, gripping too tightly. You, you spend like these three quarters gripping really tightly, needing to see all of the, the blind turns and under every rock. And so there's gripping to a particular outcome way, way, way too intensely. And so there's the, the final pop where that's not necessary anymore. You can just hold it and allow yourself to evolve, allow your vision to evolve, allow the parts of you to evolve. And it's all about embracing every stage of this and not carrying old desires with you if they're not actually right for you. Now we're going to do the August reading and I'm keeping this simple. We're just going to do the central energy, what you have shifting out and what you have on coming. Okay, the central energy for you in August is the lovers. Decision making, relationships, those are the two themes that I'm getting for many of you are going to be coming up. Now the lovers if you're very partnership focused, if that is the desire, the the part of you that's been creating has been working on partnership, then that is the central focus. For others of you, this might just be, I'm making lots of decisions, there's lots of movement, because you can also see this is a really active lover's card. There is like a whole, a whole shebang, a whole party happening in this card, and so... August looks like it's going to be really active, really busy for you. What you have shifting out is the star. This is kind of like your orders have already been placed and you've been holding the vision, holding the faith already. It looks like there's things that are being presented to you in August after you made this ask or this request or this this thing that you've set the intention for and been holding the faith for, now the decisions or things for you to respond to are coming into vision. The oncoming energy is the emperor. This is divine masculine, certainty, confidence. This is you being in your power. So it's looking very similar to the genius card in the sense that it, it, it's about you harnessing your genius. That's what's happening here with the emperor. So allow yourself to set some healthy boundaries if needed. Get clear and claim what's yours. Know that that's going to carry you really far. So August looks like a really fun month for you, but it also looks very heavy on decision making, heavy on boundaries, heavy on declaring what's right for you and and identifying what's not. The Emperor is also reminding you of what what you get to have, like your standards are increasing. So that's the other element that I'm getting here. If you embrace this, then you can really increase the quality of whatever you're receiving. But you've got to you've got to own it first. Okay, now we're going to do a three card pick just to wrap up. You're welcome to ask a question, ask for guidance, clarity, whatever you're needing. Pick a card, any card, whatever feels good to you. Card number one. We have the two of coins. <laughs> I don't know how many times I can say decision making in one reading, but this is about this or that. 
consider what you say yes to will grow and compound. What you say no to also carries an energetic yes as well. Because when you say no to one thing, you're saying yes to another. So just consider what it is that you are saying yes and no to. Let let this be a supportive thing for you to play with and it, it's going to give you clarity on what you're calling in more of. Card number two, we have the three of wands. Look far out ahead of you, like look at your plot of land and just ask yourself, what am I, what am I planting here? What am I creating? What, what seeds am I putting in the ground? That's what the three of wands really encourages you to do. Don't skip out on this. Take some time to really sculpt your vision. I think that's going to be really helpful. Ask yourself what you desire moving forward. Make that clear. Make your desires clear. And then card number three, we have the king of coins. This is the earth king, right? It's the money, resources, stability, all of that power is shining through here. So you have a lot of mastery over your material world. Like it's just r really sharpening your toolkit when it comes to like money, home, your root, being really grounded in you being able to support yourself. That's, that's the main thing that's coming through here is the autonomy. Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. And before you go, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment if anything resonated. Check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing. And if you would like more content from me, make sure you sign up for my newsletter. Good things come to you in my newsletter, and you can stay up to date on everything. All of the info that you need is in the description box if you'd like to work with me or check out all of the other offers that I have. Just check below. All of the decks that I've used in the reading today are also listed as well. I'm sending you so much love and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.